Last year, Cincinnati football did the unthinkable. They became the first non-Power 5 school to make the college football playoff. The Bearcats' rise has been incredible over the last few years, but this is a pretty storied program, and it's not that far-fetched to think that the Bearcats could return to the playoff in the coming years. Not only do they return their head man in Luke Fickle, but the program has been recruiting better, they're headed to the Big 12, and they've now opened the door for schools like that to have the opportunity to do so. In today's video though, I'm going to talk about the 2022 team. The Bearcats lost a lot of star players and star talent from last year's team, so we're going to talk about who could maybe replace some of these guys, what the expectations should be for Cincinnati, their schedule, and players you should take a look at. So without further ado, let's talk about the truth about Cincinnati football. The hype for Cincinnati football in 2021 really started at the conclusion of the 2020 season. They put up a good fight against Georgia in their bowl game, and were actually just a couple plays away from winning. That's why they started out ranked number 8 in the nation, behind their star quarterback Desmond Ritter, their star running back Jerome Ford, and their star wide receiver Alec Pierce. They also had guys such as Darren Beavers, Sauce Gardner, and MJ Sanders. Unfortunately, they're going to lose all of those guys. The Bearcats had a historic draft, where Sauce Gardner went with the 4th overall pick to the Jets, Alec Pierce went in the 2nd round to the Colts, Brian Cook went in the 2nd round to the Chiefs, Ritter went to the Falcons, MJ Sanders went to the Cardinals, Kobe Bryant went to the Seahawks, Jerome Ford went to the Browns, Beavers went to the Giants, and Curtis Brooks went to the Colts. The Bearcats ended up having nine players drafted last year, and that is a lot of talent for a group of five school to replace. So, who should we be watching out for and looking for in next year's team? Well, the first guy we need to talk about is their quarterback, Evan Prater. I cannot even begin to tell you how excited I am to watch this guy. He went to Wyoming High School in Cincinnati, Ohio, became Mr. Football in the state of Ohio, and put up big time numbers. Not only is he 6'5", but he also has an afro, and he just has the star quarterback look. He also had the star quarterback skills, as coming out of high school, he was the number 6 dual threat quarterback, and the 174th best player in the class of 2020, all while garnering a 4 star ranking. This was the biggest quarterback commitment in Cincinnati football history, and Prater is now likely going to start. He was the backup last year to Ritter, and there's no reason why Evan is not going to be the guy this year. While we will have growing pains, I think Prater will figure it out by the end of the year and will be the next great Cincinnati quarterback. So now you lost Jerome Ford, who's going to step up at running back? Well, the Bearcats have a couple guys they recruited at high school, but the dude who should be the starter is Corey Kiner. You probably recognize that name if you're an SEC fan, as he was a big-time four-star recruit coming out of high school and chose to go to LSU. He ran for 324 yards and two touchdowns last year for the Tigers, but after all the turmoil and the new coaching change, Kiner decided to enter the portal, where he'll more than likely be the day one starter. The Bearcats had luck with their former SEC transfer in Ford, and Kiner could just be the next guy in line. We'll have to wait and see though. So obviously they lost Alec Pierce and Michael Bryant to the NFL, so who's going to be the star receiver? Well, Prater is going to have two really good options to throw the ball to, as one of them is a receiver and one is a tight end. Let's first start with the wide receiver, and that is Tyler Scott. At 5'11", Scott broke out last year as he caught 30 passes for 520 yards and 5 touchdowns, and more than likely, he's going to step up and become the number one option in that part of the game. There are also plenty of other players, but Scott is the guy penciled in to take over. The number one weapon on the team should be Josh Wiley, though. Last year, he was also a breakout star, as in his three years at Cincinnati so far, he's caught 56 passes for 736 yards and 12 touchdowns, and he should be the number one target, and maybe he could be the next Travis Kelsey. Yeah, I'll pump the brakes on that one, but there are some decent weapons in the receiving game, and combining that with a naturally talented running back and quarterback, the offense should be okay. Also add in the fact that they returned most of their offensive line, and I'm not too worried about the offensive side of the ball. Defense is where a lot of people are wondering. They lost a lot of star talent as they lost their best corner, best safety, best edge rusher, and best linebacker. Some names to watch are Deshaun Pace, who will be a linebacker, Javon Hicks, who will be a safety, and Arquan Bush, who is a corner. I'm excited for all three of those players, and we're going to find out what kind of players Fickle has on his bench. So overall, Cincinnati returns a decent amount of players and has plenty of guys who could step up, but how does the schedule look? Well, in week one, we're going to find out pretty quickly what's going on with them. They're going to go on the road to play against Arkansas. Sam Pittman's hogs are no easy pushover like they were during the Chad Morris era. They have one of the toughest quarterbacks in the nation in KJ Jefferson, a solid running back room, a good offensive line, a good defense, and a five-star receiver transfer from Oklahoma in Jaden Hazelwood. Add in the fact that this game is on the road, and I don't think Cincinnati's going to pull it off. If Cincinnati can find a way to win this game, then they'll definitely be ahead of schedule, but as of right now, I'm going to chalk that one up as a loss. 
In week two, they're going to play Kennesaw State, which will be a home game and a tune-up game where they'll figure out what they have, and freshmen and backups will get an opportunity to play. The same thing should continue in week three as the rival Miami of Ohio comes to town, and I think they're going to start out with a 2-1 and one record. After that, they will rematch with the Indiana Hoosiers, and this game is quite interesting. While Cincinnati went into Bloomington last year and came out with a win, Indiana should be a little bit better than last year. Something was extremely broken with that Indiana team last year, and the chemistry was completely off, and there is going to be a fire lit under them after that 2-10 campaign and after all the Tom Allen firing rumors. I expect this game to be close, but because Cincinnati is at home, I will give them the win. After that, the Bearcats will go on the road to Tulsa, and while Tulsa was pretty good in 2020, I don't think they're any good going into next year, and this will give Cincinnati their fourth win. After that, they go back home to play against South Florida, and while I think Jeff Scott slowly has the Bulls program back on the rise, I still think they're a year or two away from being able to compete with the Bearcats, so that's going to give another win to them. After that, things start to get a little bit more difficult. The most important two-game stretch will come in late October, as the first game will be on the road in Dallas against SMU. The Ponies will return one of the top quarterbacks in the country in Tanner Mordecai, and also one of the top up-and-coming offensive minds in Rhett Lashley, who left his position as the offensive coordinator at Miami to become the head man for the Ponies after Dykes left for TCU. Depending on how the team is meshed, I think Cincinnati definitely has a chance in this one, but honestly, I'm going to go with SMU, and that'll give Cincinnati their second loss of the year. After that, they'll go on the road to play against UCF, and I'm kind of in a similar boat with this game. Gus Malzahn is a good coach, USF has a lot of talented players, and this game is on the road. So honestly, I think UCF is going to get the better of the Bearcats, and this will give Cincinnati their third loss. So far, I have them losing to Arkansas, SMU, and UCF, and I'm not saying they can't win any of those three games, but with all the talent they ended up losing, it's just hard to pencil in a win on the road against teams that I think will be pretty decent. Luckily for Cincinnati's sake, they have a pretty easy four-game stretch to end the year. They'll get Navy at home on November 5th, and this is probably the biggest challenge they have left, as Navy runs the triple option, and they always seemingly are decent. I do think Cincinnati will win that game and avoid a three-game losing streak before they will take care of East Carolina at home, and then they have a road trip against Temple. I was at Cincinnati's home game against Temple last year, and while Stan Drayton is a pretty decent coach and I think will have Temple back on the rise, the Owls are in a pretty dark spot as they are devoid of talent pretty much everywhere and they don't have a great home atmosphere, so I think Cincinnati will take care of that game, and then finally they'll get Tulane at home. Tulane gave Oklahoma a scare in week one last year, and I like Willie Fritz, but with this game being at home, Cincinnati having more talent, and it being 12 games into the season, I don't see Cincinnati dropping that last game, and this gives them their ninth win of the year. This would have the Bearcats at a 9-3 campaign, with two conference losses and one non-conference loss. Depending on how things shake out, it could be good enough to get them to the American Championship game, but we'll just have to wait and see how the season plays out. There's a lot of question marks surrounding who's going to step up, but as we've talked about in the video, there are plenty of guys who could step up right away. Fickle's a tremendous coach, Cincinnati has a great fan base, and they're probably the best group of five program, so I'm not too concerned about them, and I think a 9-3 season is what a rebuild will look like for them. What do you think, though? If you're a Cincinnati fan, give me your thoughts on this year's team, who are some players to watch, and how do you think they will do? If you're a fan of another school, give me your thoughts on Cincinnati. Let me know what team or player I should take a look at next. And before you go, don't forget to like and subscribe, and check out all my other previews and videos on the end screen. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.